Welcome. If you know Sonny, the soul father Grasso, well then you know that over the years he's been in the company of some very, very famous people. And you also know that more often than not, he's either said or done something that made him say, Oops, I did it again. So sit back each week and enjoy yourself as Sonny recants many of his social blunders. Wow, what a rousing round of applause from a packed studio audience. <laughs> Hello everybody, Sonny the Song Father Grasso is back with another podcast. Uh, it's been a while since I did one, uh, well not too long as it used to be, but because little by little the health is getting better. Um, next week I have uh, uh, eye surgery on... Uh, uh, some cataracts, uh, stigmatism that's growing and something else. And according to that doctor, you're going to have wonderful vision for the rest of your life. I said, oh, great. I mean, that's, that's all I'm looking for. And then he said, but I have to tell you these things. You could get an infection. You could get this. You could get that. You could lose an eye. You could, because, but it it's 99%. Um, perfect that it goes perfect I said it's perfect that it goes perfect well you know what I mean I said oh God, I guess I do I said but let me make something clear to you he goes yeah sure I said if I lose an eye you're losing two <laughs> it was okay we understand each other so uh, hopefully uh, that'll uh, that'll clear the trick because uh, real quickly uh, if you've been following me here or on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, you know that uh, um, at the prostate cancer um, and the treatments in, in uh, 2020, uh, you know, it was put off for months of COVID. And then I moved down here uh, to beautiful North Palm Beach, Florida. And then I went uh, under the uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy uh, that was supposed to be 25 treatments. Then they upped it to 40, then 50, then 60. But very early into the treatments, when I'd be leaving there, I, you know, I couldn't tell if the light was red or green. I couldn't read the street signs, and my eyes were getting like really bad. And I never had a problem like that before. Uh, I, I, you know, I could see, uh, I can see for miles and miles. Um, but up close, like if you had to read uh, a prescription bottle or a menu sometimes or whatever, I'd sort of have to pull out a pair of uh, drugstore glasses. But, you know, otherwise, you know, I didn't. I never wore glasses uh, in a long, 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 long time. Uh, but, and the only uh, common barrier or, 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 you know, thing that was going on in my life was this hyperbaric oxygen therapy thing where you're inside that tube, you know, with the oxygen uh, and uh, after I did some checking into it, it says that could be one of the side effects. I'm like, oh, great. You know, I didn't know that then, but um, so it's uh, you know, the glasses. I can't see uh, clearly. Uh, no, I'm not going to sing. Uh, but uh, unless I put my glasses on. So now with these glasses, I got 20-20. And without them, uh, I'm Stevie Wonder. It's just, it's bizarre. And I still uh, haven't gotten used to it. And according to him, this is gonna, uh, this is gonna clear. No pun intended. But this is gonna clear all that up. He goes. Then we're gonna pop those lenses out, and we're gonna put some nice uh, uh, sunglass lenses in there for you. Um, you know, non-prescription, whatever. And then you get a nice pair of sunglasses. I was like, okay, that sounds good to me. Okay. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm now on four months with the urologist with the prostate cancer. The PSA number is uh, still way under one, which is uh, perfect. And uh, so, you know, knock on wood, which I'm knocking on my head. I guess another song I could be singing. I got songs in my head. I'm going to knock, knock, knock on wood. Boom, boom. But maybe uh, now all the shit's behind me now, you know. Oh, shit. Now I'm get, now I'll probably get hemorrhoids for saying that. But anyway, uh, which would be good. Because we still got, uh, what do we got, about, I don't know, three months down here uh, 
until the rainy season starts and then the summer hits and all that other stuff. And, uh, you know, wow. And like everybody throughout the country, but down here, what we went through, who's got a coat? I don't have a coat. I gave all my winter coats and everything away. And what we went down here for the past 10 days has like been unbelievable. Two or three blankets. I even forgot I had a heater. All I knew was I had is air conditioning. And it was, it was just bizarre. Uh, as it was everywhere, record amounts of snowfalls and this and that and two feet here. And and uh, my friend Paul, who's uh, from the Boston area, was up there uh, uh, to see his mom and hang out with her, who wasn't feeling well, and his family. And he's, they got hit with two. He got out of there just in time. They got hit with two feet of snow. I'm like, oh, my God almighty. And now they're all, you know, to this day, I still don't get it. But, you know. You're blaming a groundhog for the weather. I mean, seriously. Are, are you people really, like, thinking about what you're saying? You know? Or are you thinking about what you're posting? I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, it's a fun it's a fun thing. But now I, I saw people are arguing about who is, who's right more. Is it the, the Punxsutawney Pill, Phil, whatever his name is? Or is it the, the Staten Island Chuck? Or is it the... Uh, um, they even have one down in Florida, or, uh, Florida flow. I don't know, whatever. But uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. Whatever. It is what it is. Period. That's it. And so, but at least, at least for here, if not the whole country, you know, and the rest of the country still has winter to go through. So when the groundhog predicts uh, uh, six more weeks of winter, um, actually, there is six more weeks of winter. So if you want to say six additional weeks of winter. Oh, that's a different story then. Okay, but whatever. So I hope everybody's just safe and uh, uh, dealing with the weather as best they can and being smart about it. Very sad to read that uh, up in New York, I don't know how where else across the country, but uh, there was uh, two men and a, and a woman, of course, in different places, but that lost their lives because they were trying to shovel too much and they, the three of them died of a heart attack. I mean, since I was a kid, I remember them saying that on the news. And I rem- remember the uh, the weather uh, forecasters uh, saying that. Uh, don't shovel too much and don't, you know, if you have a heart condition or this or that, or whatever. Uh, you know, it's, it's still true today. Nothing has changed that way. You know, maybe they get it plowed away faster and cleaned faster, but it's still snow and it's still heavy. And when it comes down and down a mount, you know, don't go crazy. You know, it's, it's only snow. It's going to melt. It's going to go away. But, Whatever. So my prayers go out to them and their families because uh, you know, it's bad enough dealing with it, with the anticipation and what's going to happen. And I got to get the milk and the eggs and this and that. It's not like the old days where that snow would be around forever. You know, everybody can remember uh, that it is in my age bracket that when we got a nice snowstorm, those streets were covered with snow for days, if not weeks. You can go skitching on the back of the cars. We would build forts. You know, on the front lawn, you know, I, actual ice forts and hang out inside, and it was the coolest thing ever. Now, eh, nothing lasts more than more than a, maybe at the tops three days. Streets are down clear within two days, so you don't need to go running out and and emptying the shelves of all these grocery stores like the you know the the atom bomb is coming to be uh, exploded. It's so silly. But it's, it's, it's routine, it's habit, it's what you grew up with and what you get used to. So, you know, you can't tell me that you were that, uh, your house is, is, is that empty that a snowstorm makes you think, oh, I better go out and buy toilet paper. I mean, <laughs> what the fuck am I? So anyway, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna try something new and different, uh, rather than, uh, when I do these podcasts, and I always do it with good intentions and looking to entertain and have fun in mind, but <laughs> I do have a tendency to go off on political rants because, uh, you know, what you see and hear going on out there uh, by our leaders and uh, being fueled uh, by the media and everything else uh, is is beyond absurd. It's beyond crazy. It's borderline illegal some of the things that they are doing and 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 but the word that i have for this whole entire thing is it's insulting it's insulting to us as as citizens of this great country uh the greatest country still in the world no matter what's going on no matter you know uh, whatever paths to ruin that we're uh, 
we're being led down blindly, uh, we're always going to come out of it because we're not stupid and it's insulting to treat us that way. But there are enough people out there that are doing their critiques and, uh, you know, you know, yeah, experts crawling out of the freaking ground. And, uh, and then you got some people like Dan uh, Bongino, who's, uh, uh, you know, very well spoken man, uh, a little, uh, a little dramatic at times, but he's Italian, so of course you have to accept that. <laughs> but he's been banned for life from YouTube uh, for, uh, you know, giving his opinions about what's going on uh, and uh, um, talking about uh, uh, Joe Biden's apparent, uh, uh, if not dementia, some kind of very frontal lobe uh, uh, brain brain disorder or whatever, and uh, um, whoever put the pressure on, boom, banned for life. I, I thought in this country that you were allowed to say what you want. You know, uh, you can't yell fire, uh, you know, that's the old saying. You can't scream fire in a crowded movie theater if there's no fire. That's against the law. I get that. But he's not screaming fire. He's giving his opinion. He's giving on what he sees. He says... You know, the thing that really got him in trouble was I can see that that uh, President Biden recognizes the person. He just has a, 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 some kind of a frontal, in my opinion, these are his words, in my opinion, he has to say it like every every half a sentence. He goes, but in my opinion, there's some kind of a frontal lobe disorder that he can bring that up, back up into his brain to say, oh, you know, that's Sonny Grasso. It's always oh, and this guy over here, and uh, because he can't remember the he can't remember the name. He knows who the person is. He just can't remember the name. There's nothing wrong with what he said. You know, he's not making. Uh, I guess you could say you could say he was coming across uh, as an expert on frontal lobe disorders and everything else. But he did say many times, it's uh, based on my opinion. That's all it is. I'm not a doctor. He said that I don't know how many times. But now banned for life. So. I guess you can't really say what you want. I guess there really isn't a, a freedom of speech like there used to be for certain people. Some people and some, you know, uh, uh, crews are allowed to say and do whatever they want and get and get the airtime and get the support and everything else. And then some aren't. Uh, you know, it's like you know, you're going to follow these rules, or we're going to we're going to we're going to march you all somewhere if you don't get on board. It's, it's it's not cool. It's, I, I don't like that. But like I said, there's enough of them doing that out there. So, you know, I like doing this. I like the podcast thing. I'm still going to figure out a way where I could do it where, uh, like these guys that have their podcasts out there, uh, instead of just listening to me, uh, you know, maybe you want to watch me do it. I don't know. Or you want to see the expressions on my face, you know. But I like doing this. I like helping people. Uh, you know, you're talking about free speech. When I first started doing my thought for the day, my first thought for the day was in January of 2010. Okay? 365 days a year for 12 years, you know, into the 12th year or into the 13th year, whatever. And um, I do it to help. I do it also to help myself sometimes, you know, uh, you know, giving myself the same kind of... Uh, uh, I don't want to say philosophy, but let's just use that word, philosophy on how to deal with life and, and how to make yourself a better person, and how we all together can be a better people. And so I, it started off slow, of course, and then it caught on. And, and then for the longest time, I was averaging at least 100 to 150, quote unquote, likes a day on Facebook. You know, the actual viewing was into the thousands upon thousands every day, which is nice, too. You know, the shares uh, were never where I would have liked them to be because it only takes two seconds to hit share. But uh, wait a minute, that didn't sound right. Sonny Bono was dead anyway. Right, never mind. <laughs> but, you know, so the shares used to be ah, 10 to 20, um, you know, every day. And then I got into a couple of jams with Facebook, and you can't say that, and you can't do this, and... Um, I uh, I got in trouble uh, with YouTube, too, because uh, in my podcast, I talked about things that I read on the Internet. I talked about things that I heard on television. I heard. I read. I didn't make up. It wasn't even a Bongino kind of thing where I'm, this is just my opinion. I'm just carrying on what was told 
to me through print and through television. And um, they they jumped all over me. You know, we're going to let this go with a warning. I mean, okay. And then Facebook did the same thing. Uh, and now, ever since I've been in, a, a, you know, a couple of jams, they call it shadow boxing or uh, shadow boxing. Uh, shadow banning. I don't, I don't know what that means exactly, but, um, but now I average uh, 40 to 60, maybe three shares. What's going on? 500 views, maybe, instead of the thousands upon thousands. Of, why? Why? I don't understand. I, I, I do understand, I think, because it's all computers now that are, that are policing, uh, these, um, these, uh, media waves. Uh, and you can't you can't argue with a computer. It's black and white. See, I found my clock, by the way. So the Christmas clock is coming down today. I had it in my public storage, like a schmuck. But uh, uh, let's just finish to the songs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'll probably get in trouble for this too. Yeah, thank you. So uh, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So. Uh, you can argue with a computer. It's black or it's white. That's it. These are the rules. You know, a computer doesn't analyze what, what, what was the intent, what context it was using. Did he mention any names? And I don't know. They, they don't do that. You can't do this. You can't say that. You can't talk about this. You can't, you can't have an opinion about this. Blah, blah, blah. You know, it was like, it was like when I was growing up going to, to parochial school. That's how the nuns uh, were. You know, I didn't, whoever knew that they were the original walking, talking computers at the time. Uh, it's, it's just, it's not right what's being done. Uh, and literally not right because they're taking away, uh, or whittling away at, our, at, at, at rights. But so anyway, there was enough people out there doing it and, you know, if 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 I've lost that appeal out there uh, with the thought of the day, and people don't like it anymore, just tell me, and I'll, <coughs> excuse me, I'll stop doing it. Like I have no problem with that. I do it to help. I like entertaining, helping, blah blah blah. Like I said, so so I'm sitting here the other night, and I'm like, oh, what am I gonna do? I don't want to do these rants anymore because you know uh, most people are pretty well on top of what's going on. Uh, there's enough of it out there uh, between between the internet and between TV and the the 500 and something stations we all have now, and uh, where people can, if they choose to, uh, stay on top of what's happening and, and make their own opinions. And you certainly don't need me when there's people much much smarter than I am and more uh, well informed than I am um, doing their own thing out there. Um, I joined BMI. I'm still battling back and forth um, when when they want to uh, uh, mute uh, a podcast or they want to mute a concert or even a one song that I do, and I got to go back. And uh, at least I think I've come, I think, to some kind of agreement with Facebook. They don't seem to bother me anymore because, you know, I pay for the licensing. I'm, I pay for BMI. I pay for TuneCore. You know, so at least I can go out there and sing for you people, which I love to do. You know, there's one day somebody going to ring my bell and say, hey, you know what? I've been listening to you. You know, I, I think you're, you're good. Why don't you come here and whatever. If that ever happens, fine. If not, that's fine, too. But so what am I going to do? What am I going to do a podcast about? And then it hit me. It was mom and uh, ma and daddy up there in heaven and, and, and everybody else that I have up there. Uh, you know, we're sending only all these ideas, uh, Shelly, and why don't you do podcasts? Um, because in, in, in my life, uh, I've been very lucky through Daddy O, of course, on, on a lot of them, but through my own, my own finagling and my own cruise and this and that. Uh, I've been able to be in the company, um, of some, uh, very famous, uh, uh, sports people and celebrities and, and politicians and this and that. And in, in a fun, uh, you know, uh, arena, you know, not just, uh, you know, oh, they, oh look, oh, oh, that's so and so over there and go quick and get a picture taken with him. I'm talking about it, charity events and playing golf and, and, and dinners and this and that. And then, uh, and then to other friends. And, uh, I've always had a knack. For sticking my foot so far down my throat that I used to get athlete's tongue. That's a that's a um, 
Jack Klugman joke on uh, The Odd Couple. But it's the truth with me, you know, because I get so familiar with people right away. I, I, I've i lived my life, and I've been very, very close friends with, with, with everybody on both sides of the street, you know. Yeah, if you had a badge or you didn't have a badge, whatever it is, we all still my friends. We all got along good and busted chops. With it, blah, blah, blah. Great. And it's the same thing here. And sometimes, uh, if not most times, maybe I should have kept my mouth shut when uh, when uh, I didn't. Or maybe I shouldn't have done something, uh, but I ended up doing it anyway and turns around to bite me in the ass. But I can guarantee you this, as the introduction said. You're going to enjoy them because they're all, number one, 100% true. I don't embellish. I don't need to lie, uh, you know, uh, t- t- to make a story. It's just, it's, it's not me. And in today's day and age anyway, there's a, there's a, a lot of avenues to go out there and find out if, if the truth is being told anyway. But it's just not me. But I guarantee you that you're going to laugh. And I also guarantee you that you're going to, like, kind of sit back a little bit and, Think about it in your head and say, yeah, I could see that happening to him. Or I could see him doing that. Oh, I could definitely see him saying that. <laughs> and it just, so I started writing down just quickly off the top of my head this morning, uh, uh, different people and how many stories I could tell. And I'm, I'm into the into the mid forties already um, without even really like thinking hard. Um, and I'm saying, you know what? If I do one of these a week and tell one story, it's almost a whole year of just these kind of, you know, there's a word for them, but I forget what it is. You know, quips, I don't know. But these stories about the uh, the, the, the the company of these people that I've been in and, and the things that I've done and said is like, you know, you know, a struns, a strunado, you know, I need a smack in the back of the head. You know, may he rest in peace. That's what when we would be working on the movies. That's what Daddy used to say to me sometimes. You know, I'd open my mouth and say something, and he'd just shake his head and say, "You know, it's cold out. Why don't you go relax in the car for about four hours?" <laughs> and I say, "No, Dad, I'm here to work." And then, oh my God, help me! So, uh, so that's what we're gonna do here, and uh, so we'll get cracking on it right away. The first one, the first story I'm gonna I, that I picked to start with. Uh, is one of my favorite stories to always tell because um, I really, really make myself look like an asshole. <laughs> but uh, it, it's it's with a man that I do not admire as a human being, and I don't mean that like in a, in a, in a hateful kind of way. I just don't admire him um, for what he's done and said and and uh, and some of the the real controversy. Uh, he's stepped both his feet in where he has no uh, no place being there, and that's Mr. Robert De Niro. That's again just my opinion, but things that that you know what everybody knows what we're talking about. But as an actor, let me tell you again, I this is not just my opinion, but he is one of the greatest actors that ever ever hit the screen, and uh, he is just uh, well well into what his part is supposed to be. Uh, and that's why he's always well sought after. Um, he gets into his character, and and he makes you believe that he's that person. I mean, the whole Jake LaMotta thing, and Jake LaMotta is one of my stories, uh, but that's down the road. But the whole Jake LaMotta thing, for him to get in the shape that he got in, I mean, he was unbelievable shape for that movie. And then to go get out of shape and put on something like 60 pounds, Instead of being padded up and everything because he didn't want to do that, you know, and then do the scene and then take all that weight back off and get back. I mean, that, that, that is one committed actor. So anyway, so here's the story. It's in the 70s. I'm working on a movie called Cruising uh, starring Al Pacino. And uh, I was Al Pacino's uh, bodyguards. Uh, and uh, so was my uncle. And of course, daddy was there. Uh, Whenever he could, he was busy, you know, with a lot of other things too at the time. But and uh, it's a true story about a cop who goes undercover into the gay community uh, to try to find out who's killing all these gays because uh, gay men were being found uh, uh, murdered um, throughout New York. 
Um, so the book was written, and then this movie was being made uh, by Weintraub. And the gay community was up in arms uh, about the making of this movie because they thought it was going to glorify killing gay gay people uh, when that had nothing to do with it. The facts are the facts. You know, this wasn't a made-up, uh, you know, if it was a made-up script and a made-up story, you could say, mm, okay, uh, it's a really big stretch, but I could see what they're saying. But it, these are just facts. This is what, what was going on. Um, and it's really about the investigation and this cop who in real life is a, is, is a friend of the families. Um, so, but because of that, uh, the death threats were like every day, 10, 10 to 20 every day, if not more, um, against Weintraub, his son, Pacino, uh, Mark Johnson, a producer, um, who else? Uh, a couple other people. Um, for, for, uh, for if you continue to do this movie. And there were times that we were out on location filming and we were having, uh, you know, we had the, uh, the police down there putting up barricades and they're throwing bottles off, off roofs and from across the street and the bottles are breaking on cars and against the walls, the glass showering down on top of us, throwing, you know, pieces of bricks and rocks. I mean, it, yelling, screaming, stop the movie cruising. I mean, it was... It was scary uh, to work on that movie. And I loved working on the movies. I loved it to death. I loved the whole idea. I loved, you know, because I'm, I'm a creative person anyway. And uh, I just liked the whole idea, how it all comes together. But this was like, oh, man. And uh, uh, Pacino was very, very uptight, understandably so, that uh, he would sit in his trailer, not come out, not even for a cup of coffee, it would be brought into him, or a sandwich would be nothing. Whatever he had, it brought into him. And uh, when they would call me on the radio, okay, we're ready. I go and get him, take him, walk him into wherever he's doing the scene. As soon as the scene's over, boom, take him, walk right back into the trailer. And uh, it was scary times. So now uh, it was a Saturday, and we don't, uh, unless we're, you know, we were very far behind uh, on schedule. Uh, or, or uh, you know, way over budget, uh, there was no filming on the weekends. Um, so, uh, But the production office was down on the west side, down by the piers, um, like almost at the end of, uh, say, 14th Street, somewhere in that area there. And that's where the production office was for this movie. A lot of production offices are down there. And so I'm in there with my, my Uncle Bobby, and we were hanging out. It's the easiest job that you could ever think to possibly have. Uh, because there's nothing going on. But we were there because we were doubled up because of, uh, of all these death threats. The phone was going all day long. You know, hello, production. Yes, we're coming to blow up that building. We're going to kill you. And I would go like, right, could you do me a favor? Could you do, like wait an hour and then come kill me because my lunch just got here and I'd hang up the phone. And that would only enrage you the more, you know. But hey, you got to do what you got to do. And so Mark Johnson, who was a production assistant or assistant producer, whatever the hell he was, uh, for this film, uh, who is now a big, big, big time uh, uh, producer. I even think he's uh, won a couple Academy Awards, I think. But uh, anyway, so he comes out and uh, he comes up to me and, and my Uncle Bob and he says, hey, uh, I'm going to pick up uh, Robert De Niro and I'm going to be bringing him back here. Um, because him and him and uh, Al used the same um, uh, barber, hairstylist, whatever the frig you want to call it. So uh, he just figured it would be easy to do both of them there instead of going to two different places. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm like saying to myself, what are you telling me for? But okay, yeah, great, all right. So he leaves. I turn to my Uncle Bob, and I'm like, holy shit, man, Robert De Niro's coming here. How cool is that? And uh, he's like, yeah, you know, because you know, a taxi driver and everything, so. Um, so maybe 45 minutes, 50 minutes go by bzz, on the door. I look up at the camera. There's Mark Johnson with Robert De Niro. Bzz, buzz him in. And he comes over to where we're sitting. And he says, Bob, Sal, I was called Sal. Bob, Sal, I want you to meet uh, Robert De Niro. So he shakes my uncle's hand. How you doing? My uncle says, hi, how you doing? Nice to meet you. And he shakes my hand. And he says, how you doing? Nice to meet you. And I look at him and I go, oh, you're talking to me? Now, I thought that was funny. I thought that would have been funny. You know, I'm showing respect 
for the, for the job that he did in that movie, you know? Everybody was doing it in the world, for Christ's sake, that ever saw that. I don't see nobody else here. Ain't nobody here but me and you, you know, that whole mirror scene. And But whatever. So he doesn't say anything. He's still holding my hand. And he's just looking at me in the eyes, you know? And I, 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 I think I might have done a little poo-poo in my pants. I don't know. So he lets go of my hand, and he starts to walk down the hallway. Uh, Mark Johnson's got a gigantic laugh on his face. And, but so they start walking down the hallway, and De Niro stops, turns around, looks at me over his shoulder, continues down the hallway, stops one more time, looks over his shoulder again at me, shakes his head like, I can't believe this asshole, and then disappears behind the door. And uh, um, the barber was, uh, the, the barber, oh, that's what it was, that's why. The barber had come in between the two. And he goes, whatever, As, uh, the, did uh, Jose show up yet? And yeah, he's already in there with, uh, with that. Oh, okay, good. So and then they disappear. So I turned to my uncle. I'm like, what the hell was that all about? It, it, was he mad? What, I didn't, it, it wasn't an insult, was it? And he goes, well, no, but Sonny. He goes, how many times do you think he's heard that since that movie came out? I'm like, well, yeah, okay, but still, did he stop and, and stare at everybody that ever said it since uh, Anyway, I was like, I was pissed, and then I was, I was also scared at the same time. Like, oh my god, what did I do? I did it. I, I'm going to get in trouble, or whatever. So, about three hours goes by, and like I said, on Saturdays and Sundays there was no filming, and uh, so we would do uh, 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 an eight to four. Uh, I would do most of them. Uh, uh, one, and I would split that with my uncle. We'd go back and forth. And because it is, if it needed to be doubled up, if the threats were really getting out of control, um, or we couldn't get extra patrol cars that day to hang out by where we were or whatever, so then we would double up. So <clears throat> it's getting close to, to 3 o'clock. We know we're going to be leaving by 4. And then we we lock everything up, and then Uncle Mike would come in at 4 and work until 6 in the morning. And uh, may he rest in peace too. So anyway, so now we get the door open. Okay, click, 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 coming down the hallway. And uh, there's uh, De Niro with Mark Johnson again. And he okay, click, click, click. And he goes, right, uh, I goes I'm, I'm going to drop him off. Um, and uh, then I'll, I, I'm not coming back. He goes, so Al, uh, uh, Al already knows that uh, a car's coming to pick him up. Uh, should be here within the hour. Uh, and then, you know, everybody have a great weekend and everything. And I'm like, mm-hmm. And, you know, so De Niro, uh, he's just kind of standing there. So I said, all right, well, have a good weekend, everybody. And so he stops, and he turns, and he comes walking towards me. And he leans in. His face is about a foot. That's it, from my nose, nose to nose. And he, he looks at me right in the eye, and he says, were well, you talking to me? And then he busted out a hysterical laugh, and I was like, oh, my God, inside. Thank God he did that because he let me off the hook, you know. And he walks out shaking his head, hysterical laugh, and have a good weekend. He waves his hand, and him and Mark Johnson leave. So I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. So I remember Uncle Bobby saying, you know, all right, you happy now? Is that a relief? I said, yeah, it was a relief. You don't know what somebody's going to say. Who is this guy? What is he doing talking like that to this? You know, I don't know. I don't, you know. So anyway. That's that's all done with. And so we're sitting there, and then boom, the car pulls up. You can see it on the camera. Bam, bam. So uh, I uh, I buzz uh, Pacino. I see uh, the uh, the car's outside. And okay, and so he comes walking out. He says, all right, thank you. Uh, I said, all right, so uh, have a good weekend, and uh, we'll see you next week. And so he stops, Pacino stops, and he turns and he looks at me. He goes, oh, you're talking to me? I was like, what? He goes, do you know he didn't stop talking about you in there? I go, who? He goes, who? Who do you think who? I said, Robert De Niro? He goes, yeah. I said, he goes, he wanted to come out. I had to lock the door because he wanted to come out and give you a smack in the back. <laughs> I said, yeah, well, then he would have had a problem. I'll tell you that right now. And he let out a laugh, like you know, like a true Pacino laugh from his belly. And, uh, you know, said have a good weekend or whatever the hell he said and got in his car and left it and uh um and me and my uncle were just hysterical laughing after that and like so when i tell that story when my you know when daddy heard that story he was like what's wrong with you like what do you mean what do you mean what's wrong with me he goes what would make you say that i said i thought it was a funny thing to say well you're not being paid to be funny 
You're being paid to be a bodyguard. I said, well, there's no funny bodyguards? Then I, then I knew I was in trouble. But, uh, but he got around. So years and years later, uh, having something to eat in the city with Daddy-O, and uh, he was, he, he's like looking, he's stretching his neck. He goes, hey, I'll be right back. I think I see somebody. And so he goes, and he comes back. And he goes, come here, come with me. I go, what? And we walk over, and uh, he goes, uh, Mark, say hi to Sal. So this, this guy says, yeah, how you doing? Nice to meet you. And uh, he goes, you don't, you, don't, you don't recognize him? You don't know him? So this guy, Mark, says, no, I, I don't know him. Why, have we met? So he goes, Sonny, he slipped there. He goes, Sonny, tell him, uh, uh, give him the line that he'll remember you by. And I went, oh, oh, sure. What are you talking to me? And and Mark, it was Mark Johnson. It's totally different, of course. He had grown up, you know, and uh, you know, gotten older and cut his hair like we all did, and blah blah blah. But uh, he goes, "Oh my God, Sal!" And then he goes, "Wait, Sonny." He goes, "Yeah, this is my kid." He goes, "Oh no, Mike, I didn't know that." Da, 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 da. He goes, "I got to tell you something. I still, to this day, at least two, three times a month, I go down to Tribeca and I have dinner." with uh, with uh, Bob De Niro, and uh, more than a few occasions, that story has come up out of his mouth, not my mouth. You ever see that guy again? What was wrong with that guy? Was he a little retarded? <laughs> uh, you can't even say retarded anymore, I guess. But, but anyway, so that was uh, one of the first blunders, social blunders um, uh, of my, uh, my blundering career. But uh, that I want to share with you. And, you know, almost every one of them is going to be uh, of, of that kind of a nature. And like I said, I'm sure a lot of you right now are going, oh, yeah, I could see Sonny doing that. And, you know, I could see him doing that. Uh, you know, I just I really didn't think there was anything wrong with it. And I guess somebody, if, if it was Pacino or it was Mark Johnson or both or whatever, talk to him and go, what are you getting mad for? I mean, what did he do? He didn't insult your mother or your family or anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, too, I guess. Yeah, all right, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, all right, okay. What do you do? He said a line from your movie. Yeah, all right, yeah, okay. But, uh, you know, he could have just walked out and left me doing poop for the rest of my life in my pants. But, uh, of course, an exaggeration. But, but he, you know, I, I give him kudos uh, for, for letting me off the hook the way he did, you know? Because he could have said, hey, Hey, kid, don't worry about it, you know. It's water under the bridge. But he didn't do it that way. He got me back good, real good, especially when he leaned into my, towards my face, you know. And, I, you know, even Uncle, my, my Uncle Bob, after he left, was hysterical laughing. He goes, how scared were you? I said, I wasn't scared until he leaned over because I had no idea what he was going to say. And he goes, do you realize that you were reaching for the stapler? I, I, I was reaching for something. I didn't know what was going to happen. Very and when and like I said, when Daddy heard that, it was all over. So, so that's the first forecast forecast podcast of Oops, I did it again. And um, let's see, who should we do next week? Hold on. Oh, thank you, thank you. What a great audience, you bastards! Uh, all right, so I'm going to do one a week, uh, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, I think this way, uh, you're free. To, you're free. You're always free. But you know, do what you got to do, and uh, you got something to look forward to every week. I just don't know. I think I'll do it every Wednesday. Um, and, uh, you know, see how you like them. And certainly if you want, you know, come on Facebook. You know, right now there's no avenue to, uh, I wonder if they even have that. But there's really no place to make a comment, is there? Uh, maybe there is on Spreaker. But these podcasts, even though I, for your convenience, I put it on Facebook, but it's on every platform, every uh, uh, podcast platform that you can find. So, um, you know, just look it up and just look for uh, uh, Sunday to Song Father Grasso. All right. So, everybody, you have a good day. What are you talking to me? Shut up. I'm not getting in. And, and um, just, you know what? Oh, yeah. This is my note here. Let me do this COVID thing because uh, uh, Facebook uh, not Instagram, but Facebook, oh, TikTok, even though I quit those bastards, uh, and, and YouTube uh, uh, gave me nice compliments about uh, they liked how when I do my things, I always put up uh, uh, a COVID uh, reminder of what to do and, and some of the other PSAs. So 
let me just continue doing that. You know, it's like paying a vig, I guess, but whatever. There are everyday actions to help, to help prevent, prevent the spread of respiratory, of respiratory diseases. diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. So there you go. I did my PSA. And uh, so uh, that's it for today. Uh, studio audience, I want to thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for bringing your kids with you. Atta boy. There you go. And I hope you got a nice little chuckle out of the... <laughs> oh, you did. Good. Great. All right. I love you. Be safe out there. Be cool. Watch it. There's more snow coming uh, to the Midwest and maybe again to the Northeast. So uh, please, everybody, please take it easy. And I'll uh, we'll see you next week. Ciao.